Hello and welcome back to my channel. We're going to get into some T cells, their development, and an example application with the COVID 19. And we're going to jump right in with human T cell development. So, the major commitment cell in lymphopoiesis is the common lymphoid precursor, the CFUL. So, hematopoiesis is the process where a pluripotent stem cell goes into blood cells. And then, when you have hematopoiesis, you have lymphopoiesis, which the lymphocyte comes from. So, the CFUL gives rise to lymphoblasts that undergo the influence of cytokines, which may develop into pro lymphocytes for B cells, NK cells, and T cells. So NK cells are the natural killer cells. Uh, B cells, I'll get into it in, in another um, presentation. Here we're going to talk about the T cells. So T pro lymphocytes pass from the bone marrow into the blood and into the thymus. They develop into thymocytes and acquire maturity. Mature T cells enter the bloodstream and recirculate between the blood and the peripheral lymphoid system. So the peri peripheral uh, lymph system is circulated by the action of skeletal muscles. Uh, that's the importance of exercise. Whereas when it, uh, the lymph system empties into the left vena cava, uh, the artery and the vein system has the four chambered heart which circulates the blood so the main cytokines in the differentiation and development of the T cells are um, so the, the pluripotent stem cell uh, has contact with IL-7 and FLT3 and possibly some others I've seen the, the list that they're working on for the others. So this goes into big lists, these interleukins. That goes into the common lymphoid precursor, the lymphoblasts, and the T cells. Uh, so from lymphoblasts to T cells, you have IL-7, IL-2, IL-4, IL-9, and IL-10, for example. Um, so in the thymus, you're trying to build that TCR, which is this um, T cell receptor. And so it goes from large cortical thymocyte to small cortical thymocyte and the medullary thymocyte, okay? Uh, so there's, the, from there it branches off into CD4s and CD8s or T4s and T8s if you're doing a flow cytometry. Uh, you're just talking about T4s and T8s. So there's the T helpers, the T killer cells. Um, so some of these uh, later stages uh, are variable and might be programmed. That's why uh, it becomes helpful. Uh, so when the maturation of the CD4 helper cells branch off, you have the T helpers type 1 and T helpers type 2. So the T helpers type 2 are your macrophages, the granulocytes, uh, the granuloma formation. The T helper type 1 is the antibody production. So these antibodies in uh, the T helper cells are attached to the cells. The B cells have the floating antibodies. So these um, TCRs uh, are actually um, the, the naive T lymphocytes go into the lymph nodes and when they make contact with that first antigen uh, it triggers the differentiation of naive cells to effector cells and the effector cells include the CD4, T4s and the CD8s, the cytotoxic uh, T killer uh, 
that perform the cytotoxic activity. And so now why we're getting in this is because it, we have this new phenomena that has come up. Okay, so here we have the 2019 novel coronavirus. This virus uh, caused a lockdown in San Francisco County starting in March 17th of 2020. So this is a Baltimore classification type 4 virus, which is a single-stranded positive sense RNA virus. Um, on the Baltimore scale and later I'll get into the graphs of how it's progressing all right so this is a hospital ship that was deployed for this party for the COVID-19 um, here is a graph I was working on for how this virus, this type 4 virus, gets into the body. So there are receptors um, that it uses to bind and enter that first cell to reproduce. So one of the receptors is the ACE2 receptor. Um, the other one is the TMPRSS2 receptor, and recently there was another receptor I read about. So in the beginning, China was the first to lock down, and Seattle was going to follow. They were thinking about it, and this was before the worldwide lockdown occurred. So here we have the third month. Uh, it starts out primarily in China and these graphs are going to show how this virus spread and how I've been following it the whole time um, so here we are at um, coming in it's starting to climb and so what really piqued my interest was how this virus is going to mutate and this site is called nextstrain.org and you can track the the mutations and there are a lot of mutations with this virus um, and so it affected travel here's some um, the background is travel footage from Homeland Security. And here, you look at this graph. It's it's a 45 degree angle. And this is um, still a long time ago from the recording of this video. So what happened is at the very beginning, it was clear that this virus was going to just be very transmissible and uh, people kind of understood that it was an airborne virus from the beginning um, those receptors are why it's so um, transmissible it's like an airborne hormone that your body takes in and tries to use it but what happens is the RNA virus takes over the host cell and starts creating more viruses and uh, the virus has a, um, a package of its own enzymes that it uses it would only really need to use maybe a couple so here we go look at this death rate it's a straight 45 degree this is October now um, so what I thought is interesting is, um, uh, when I looked at, I was looking at my collection of science fiction movies and then sliders, look at this, season one, episode two and sliders, one of the parallel worlds is a lockdown virus and the graffiti says Trump right there. All right. So 
this is the upshot of the presentation. I, I had a friend who was an editor of a um, philosophical journal, and he used to get on me for, you know, give us the upshot, get to the point, tell us what this is, is about. So here's the T4s and T8s in action. Uh, the T4 here is helping the B cell. T, uh, the macrophages work together in concert with these other cells. Um, but why I think T cells are important for this COVID-19 infection is there's two methods that program the T cells to go after any antigen, any antigen that you want. So if if, when you saw the development of the T cells there, those naive T cells can be programmed by um, placing an antigen to activate them and make them effectors. The first method for programming a T cell, uh, it's engineering of immune cells. It's um, Chimeric antigen receptor T cells. So what that process is, is to make that T cell create a TCR to a cancer or possibly that um horn protein on the COVID-19 virus. The second method is CRISPR-Cas9, which is gene editing. So you could go in with some techniques and edit the T cells to go after that COVID-19 virus or particles uh, and even the um, there are um, scientists talking about using CRISPR to go intercellularly inside the body and fish out those COVID-19 RNA sequences and destroy them. There's also a method to use monoclonal antibodies to just start cloning and free floating antibodies to the COVID horn that uh, protein on the virus. What you have to be careful with with CAR T cell therapy or CRISPR nine Cas CRISPR Cas nine therapy is that you don't want to um, get in involved with the hormone-like receptors of the virus and the body. You want to go after the proteins of the virus that uh, do not affect the body. And this can be done with T cells engineering the T-cells uh, because it is uh, faster than a vaccine and there is indications that a traditional vaccine may not work in this case. This is why I'm bringing up the T-cells method and uh, I'll make a presentation of the B-cell traditional vaccine next.